the government in power and its policies affects all of us okay now what i want us to do in today's show is let us assume azimio does not exist let us also assume that raila amolo dinga does not exist and let us analyze the performance of this uda government yeah while ignoring what the opposition are saying ignoring what raila dinga is saying let us just analyze it for ourselves so that we know how much trouble we are in as a country because the truth is we're in serious trouble now before i do that i've received a lot of positive feedback from my previous video yeah which was a unique look at exactly how the tomboy assassination happened in 1969 one particular response i received was of great interest and i'd like to share it with you it is the revelation that the other gentleman who was at the scene of the assassination the second gunman i'm told hails or hailed from the akamba community and the gentleman giving me this information told me that is writing to me to confirm that my information is 100% correct and by the way if you've not taken in that video i highly recommend it okay there'll be a link in the description area below this video on youtube yeah it is important that you solve the mystery that you understand what really happened because the boy assassination has been a mystery for decades of course this information is not new on this channel yeah i did this video this revelation 6 years ago but many of us have missed it and judging from the response more than i thought now on this other gunman hailing from the akamba community i remembered that my late political lecturer had a very huge problem from his colleagues in the same community in the police force they were constantly urging him to go and take a north at gatundu in order to get promotion yeah within the force which is evidence that other communities were taking this oath the ichaweri oaths yeah and would explain why the other person trusted with this mission to be the second gunman to Ben Gedi held from the Akamba community so everything adds up very neatly and again if you have no idea what i'm talking about when i mentioned the ichaweri oaths yeah just go on this channel and search for oaths o a t h s and you will see very many videos that will bring you up to speed you know it is very good when you give information to receive confirmation of course i've already confirmed this information but it helps a lot to receive even further confirmation yeah it helps you get even more confident with your methods of information gathering so thank you very much sir now on to today's topic there is a saying that normally trouble does not come alone trouble normally calls many other troubles and they invade a person together in a mob that is the nature of this life now clearly we can say the same about the uda government nothing seems to be going right for this government okay let's break that down the other day we made a girl in the house and we noticed that it was very soggy not the usual ugali and we assumed that it must be maybe an expired packet of maize flour but now some very fascinating and disturbing information is beginning to emerge when the government opened the door for duty free importation of maize instead of picking the millers 
who are experienced in handling maize. They know exactly what they're looking for. The deal was given to a broker. Yeah, of course, the whole idea is for this broker to make a killing. And of course, you know the thinking of a broker. Yeah, quality would not be top of their list. What would be top on their list is the profit margin. And so we have ended up with maize, some of which is producing this soggy ugali. And already some leading millers have rejected this maize. They are not purchasing it from these brokers because they don't want to compromise the quality of their branded product. Makes sense. You know when you have a brand as a businessman that you've used time to build, a brand that is recognized, that brand is your life. If you mess up with that brand, you're finished in the market. And so I'm informed that we have a situation where this broker is stuck with their maze, at least some of it, yeah, not able to sell it because of this problem. What? If the plan here was this duty-free maize to come into the country to lower unga prices, of course we can now confidently say that won't happen. Yeah? Simple law of economics. And yet another looming crisis for the UDA government. And this looming crisis is being added to the already fast-growing list of very major issues and problems facing this government. The looming strike by doctors, civil servants and other public servants not paid, money to the counties delayed for months, which means that many county workers have also not been paid. Now, all this is very sad for a government that started with very big ideas yeah, of economic policies to turn around our economy. Yeah, and they brought on board Dr. David Ndee. Yeah. And of course, what has become very clear, with all due respect to this respected economist, is that there's a very huge difference between theory and what is practically on the ground. Not all theories work. Sometimes the factors are different. Sometimes the problems on the ground have already reached a crisis level. Yeah, obviously, your theories will not work the same way they'd have worked in a situation where the economy was in better shape. And of course, we know there are very few economists who will support the idea of subsidies yeah, to decrease the prices of anything. But the political reality is that if you have a suffering nation, people are stretched to the limit, then subsidies must be considered. Indeed, in many, many countries all over the world, many of whom would never have thought of subsidies, let alone implement them, just five short years ago, those countries today have subsidies. But in Kenya, they were removed and they exposed the vulnerable yeah, to the high cost of living, higher prices. They just made things worse. And so the current situation is whatever economic policies you come up with, whatever bright ideas you dream up, they're inconsequential. Yeah, because the situation now in Kenya is that we're in deep crisis. The beauty of your ship out there in the ocean, the power of the engines, etc., etc., becomes irrelevant if the ship starts sinking. And that's exactly where Kenya is today. The UDA government made a decision to deal firmly with protesters. Yeah, of course, the whole idea was to scare Kenyans yeah, away from the protests, to discourage them so that the protests would have very few numbers and then they would slowly fizzle out and become a non-issue. But what happened instead? Police brutality was excessive. Yeah, everybody could see that. 
and as we have now written to the ICC, the result is our security sector is now living in fear. They are stuck, which even hinders their normal duties. I mean, who wants to be indicted at the International Criminal Courts at The Hague? Nobody. This UDA government, which in the past has used propaganda very effectively to get their way, for instance, in dismantling and stopping reggae, yeah, stopping the BBI initiative by Rail and Huru, was sure that the propaganda would work to help them control Kenya and to keep Kenyans in check and to get the things done. But what has happened instead? The idea of always using Huru and the handshake as an excuse <laughs> has fallen flat on its face. It's now very tired to Kenyans. Kenyans are sick of hearing that excuse. And then something super fascinating has happened online. Yeah. The reason why these propaganda peddlers were doing so well in the past is that most Kenyans were quiet. They didn't want to get involved. But what has happened is that Kenyans have become very emotional. Yeah. And they've invaded social media in droves expressing the emotion and as a result have completely drowned out this UDA propaganda. I don't know if you've noticed that. So one major weapon of the UDA government, Kwisha Maneno. Of course the propaganda peddlers are still around, very much around. Sometimes they appear on the WIB forum, yeah, making comments that don't make sense. Many times they're in the comment area of my videos on this channel, yeah, saying things, yeah, that you just wonder. Maybe this guy should get their head examined, yeah, if you don't understand that these are people who are paid, they're paid bloggers. The whole day, it is just scribbling this nonsense and trash. But bottom line, how jama. Kwisha Maneno. That's the truth. Now, there's a very interesting new development along these lines recently with the Millicent Omanga controversy. Yeah, social media was a buzz with this story about Cabinet Administrative Secretary Millicent Omanga and the picture taken of her yeah, in a very compromising position. And even with some people claiming that actually it was not her. But what has really piqued my interest in this saga is what blogger Robert Alai has to say about it. He says that actually this was deliberate to divert attention away yeah, from where the attention of Kenyans should be. That is the so-called peaceful negotiation supposed to be going on or peaceful talks and even the upcoming Mandamano, to draw the attention of Kenyans away from this into discussing a hot topic on social media to get Kenyans fully occupied with this machine. It may be easy for you just to brush off what Bonala is saying. However, consider the following. Who took that photograph? Who had such close access? To the cabinet administrative secretary. These are people who even have bodyguards. So who took that photograph? Think about it. Even if you want to convince yourself that it was some ordinary Kenyan. Yeah, just think about it for a minute. Who would want to take such a risk? Taking up the powerful government of Kenya. And so all this leaves us with only one serious possible option. To consider that it was an inside job. According to a lie, the NIS, the intelligence service, now of course diverting people's attention from where it should really be is a very old trick in the book. But unfortunately still very effective. For instance, you're stuck in the traffic and you're doing something on your smartphone. Then somebody knocks on the window on the passenger side. And so your attention is attracted, diverted, to see who's knocking on that side of your window. 
And when you realize what's happening, your phone is gone. They diverted your attention to steal your phone. What I'm saying is diversionary tactics are very effective. And they always work. But in this particular case, again, it seems to be not quite working. And I'll tell you why. One needs to ask themselves the question, how long was this supposed to have an impact? How long was this going to be effective in diverting the attention of Kenyans? Because the problems are mounting for the UDA government. Maybe if things were normal, it would have worked like a charm. But not today. Not in the Kenya we are living in right now. Yeah, where there's so much pressure, when you are feeling so much pressure, financial pressure, times are hard. Now spiritually, when everything around you starts to crumble, it usually means one thing and one thing alone. And I'm sure you can guess what that is. It means, for instance, if you're talking about an individual, it means that the end of that individual is very, very close. Yeah? It usually means that auctioneers are just around the corner. It usually means financial ruin is at your doorstep. It usually means that your life is about to take a dive downwards. Now, can we apply the same to the UDA government? In my considered opinion, I think so. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja. Now, William Samoy Ruto has got the distinction of never losing an election. Okay, now bear in mind that nobody else within the borders of Kenya has that distinction. And I'm not talking about rookie MPs who have just come in, they've only had one election and they've won, therefore they have never lost an election. No, I'm talking about an experienced politician who has been in several elections. Even Raila Molodinga has lost an election. So. How come William Samuel Ruto has never lost an election?